And hi, everyone. I'm Josh Elliott. It is 11 here in the east, 8 out west. We do want to bring you uh, some breaking news now from Brussels, Belgium. You see here that footage released yesterday by authorities making a public plea uh, to help find this man, the man in the hat. We first, of course, saw footage of this man they believe is the same in footage the day of the Brussels attacks at the Brussels airport. It is believed that after his explosive device failed to detonate in that attack, he fled the airport and so made his way for over an hour back into uh, the Brussels city proper. Again, he was captured on videotape, on video moving through the city. This was released yesterday by Belgian authorities asking the public for help in identifying him. We can now tell you Belgian authorities are confirming several arrests have been made in relation to the Brussels attacks. For the very latest here, then, we want to bring in our Elaine Cobb. She joins us from Paris by phone. Elaine, what can you tell us? Josh, the public prosecutor said that there were several arrests today, as you said, in relation to the attacks in Brussels, both at the airport and on the subway station. He confirmed there had been several police raids during the day, but he said it's impossible to say at the moment who it was they arrested or um, exactly whether or not they're being charged. But he has promised a press conference. They haven't done that very often, and there have been many raids. And of course, as you say, it's just a day after they released all that surveillance video uh, showing the man who's believed to be the third bomber, the man in the hat, as he walked five miles from the airport into Brussels. So they may they were appealing to the public to give them any idea where we don't know if it's in relation to that or something else, but he is promising more news later on those several arrests. And Elaine, uh, to, to update, the, as well, it wasn't just the release of the man they believed to be the man in the hat. Authorities had hoped, if nothing else, to uh, retrieve uh, the, beige, the beige jacket that we see this man wearing. Why was that? Well, they believe that somewhere along the line he must have got rid of the raincoat because he's wearing it as he's leaving the airport, as he passes a hotel and the rental car park. But later on, he's not wearing it. And they want to find it because it may contain traces of his DNA. It could contain traces of explosives. It could have any array of forensic evidence that would help them possibly identify who this man was, because up to now they've had no idea on exactly who he was. To the best of your knowledge, what was the reaction in Brussels and the country of Belgium when this footage was released and authorities made that public plea? Well, um, it's been something preying on people's minds in Brussels, of course, that since the attacks, they know that at least one bomber, probably two, because there's a second man believed to have been involved in the subway bombings, were still on the loose. And that doesn't make people feel at ease when they've had such a serious attack in the in the capital city. So um, there was a lot of reaction from people saying, oh, OK, now we see a bit more, because up to then, all we saw was man in light-colored raincoat and hat. Now they're able to say, OK, he had dark trousers, he had shoes with light-colored soles, and he was wearing a light-colored shirt that looks like pale blue with dark elbow patches. And that's not the same description that, you know, somebody could have remembered seeing him in Scarbeck or somewhere else along the route. So people were saying, okay, it's good to know a little bit more. It gives us a chance of maybe identifying him. We can tell you the AP is now reporting uh, per the Belgian uh, broadcaster VRT, citing sources that VRT did not identify that it is believed that Paris attack suspect Mohamed Abrini was among those arrested today. Again, for those just joining us now, Elaine Cobb, uh, what can you tell us with regard to when the prosecutor's office may speak to uh, the news of these arrests? Well, they said um, they can't say when they're going to speak, but it is likely to be later today. And I suspect that will depend a bit on exactly who they have and uh, how much information they're willing to give. Uh, but they have been fairly forthcoming once they have arrested someone. If they believe it's somebody crucial to the case, it would certainly help to allay fears for the Belgians. So it would be you know, worth um, giving the news sooner rather than later. And I mentioned you are joining us 
us from Paris. If the uh, man in question, Mohamed Abrini, is the one arrested again, he was a suspect in the attacks there as well. How much has, uh, well, especially in the last 24 hours since Belgian authorities made that public plea, how much is this resonating there in, in, in the French capital? Well, Mohamed Abrini was believed to be um, one of the men who was driving with um, Abdeslam. Um, so after the t before the attacks, he's not been directly linked to the day itself, but he has been linked to the group. And since uh, nine of the ten attackers were killed on the night of November 13th or just afterwards in Saint Denis, they you know they're hoping to get somebody who will be able to talk to them. They have Salah Ad the Slam in custody in Belgium, who can of course provide some answers. But Mohamed Abrini is seen as someone who could also give them some information on exactly who was behind the November attacks in Paris, um, how they pulled it off, and crucially, who else is out there um, also ready to act and where there are other plans already made. Now, I must stress that um, the name of Mohamed Abrini has not been confirmed. Mm -hmm. It's being reported uh, by media in Belgium, but um, the, the French are not confirming it either, so we don't know yet. Again, much to, uh, much to get to here as uh, Belgian authorities confirm several arrests made uh, with regard to the Brussels, uh, the Brussels terror attacks. And again, as Elaine and I have been discussing, this comes one day after uh, those authorities had released uh, CCTV footage of uh, the purported man in the hat uh, making uh, his way back into the city proper after it is believed his explosive device did not detonate at the airport the day of the attacks. And again, uh, as authorities do release more information, Elaine Cobb uh, will be joining us to discuss it all. Elaine, we appreciate the time.